Hi everyone, I'm Mark Hatchadorian, Director of Glasshouse Horticulture and Senior Curator of Orchids here at the New York Botanical Garden. I'm happy you all could join me today for a tour of the orchid show and our incredible botanical collections. So we'll take a walk and I'll be able to show you some incredible plants and talk about this year's exhibition in everything from the design, the theming, and some of the remarkable plants that we will see in the show and find along our way. Working with Jess Latham, celebrated floral designer, was a real pleasure for us here at the New York Botanical Garden to create this year's 18th annual orchid exhibition. One of the things that is so remarkable about Jeff is his very distinctive signature style of using bold, dense blocks of color to create an immersive experience for our visitors. Here at the entrance of the exhibition, there's an incredible mirrored Vanda fountain which reflects all the colors and textures of the foliage surrounding it, giving it almost an invisible feel, even though this massive sculpture weighs several hundred pounds. Above it is an incredible grid of Vanda orchids in both electric purple and intense magenta, in which these hundreds of plants hanging from a framework create a very bold and dramatic statement the minute you walk in. The columns are filled with cascades of magenta, pink, and wildly patterned phalaenopsis. And even over here in one corner is an orchid named after Jeff Latham himself, Vanda Jeff Latham, which we were happy to be able to include in this year's exhibition. All throughout the ground is a complementary palette of foliage, including begonias, strobilanthes, and the wonderful soft green textures of ferns that not only complement, but amplify the color experience in this year's exhibition. You might notice as we go through this tour that we're traveling a different path than our visitors normally follow. The reason why is that several galleries here in the conservatory are currently closed to renovation. When working with Jeff Latham, we had an opportunity to reinvent the entire experience and in doing so have really created a very different feel for this year's Orchid exhibition. One of the other great things that we've done is throughout the conservatory brought out some really special plants, not just orchids from our collections, to really enhance the visitor experience. In this gallery, Jeff wanted a brief pause of calm before we moved on to the rest of the exhibition. He created a very small winding path and a very meadow-like effect in which orchids are placed throughout the house, both Cymbidiums, Phalaenopsis, and Paphiopetalums, dotted amongst grassy foliage, creating a very calm transition before the next house. But before we get there, I do want to share with you a really incredible plant. As I mentioned, we brought out some real stars from our extensive botanical collections, and one of the greatest orchids on display is here to my left, the Darwin Star Orchid. This orchid here, Anguacum sesquipedale, is native to eastern Madagascar. It has a fantastic story about its pollination, its discovery, and char its relationship to Charles Darwin. When Charles Darwin was presented with a sample of this plant, he theorized that because it was a white flower, fragrant only at night, and it has this remarkable long tube-like nectar spur that hangs off the back of the flower, that there was indeed a moth with a tongue long enough to reach the nectar at the very tip of that tube. It wasn't until about 40 years later that scientists did indeed discover the moth, a, a moth called Xanthopan morganae predicta, the predicted moth. And yes, indeed, it does have a tongue long enough to reach that nectar. This orchid is one of the special plants from our extensive botanical collections that shows the remarkable relationships that many orchids have evolved with their pollinators. And in this case, a night-flying moth native to Madagascar, where this orchid is from. 
One of the things about this exhibition is a real sensory experience, not just for your eyes, but for your nose as well. And I wish I could convey the beauty and intense fragrance of the citrus trees that are blooming here in the conservatory right now. It's unbelievable. Throughout this year's exhibition, Jeff wanted to create a seamless immersive experience for our visitors. So in every one of the galleries you travel through, there is definitely something interesting to see. We're gonna move into the desert galleries and I'll talk about some of the design in there. In the Deserts of Africa Gallery, we use natural materials like these bamboo poles, painting them this beautiful bright blue. One of the things that Jeff wanted to highlight was the beauty of the conservatory and the incredible architectural forms of these plants. By using these strong vertical accents, it leads the eye up, allowing you to explore every aspect of the beauty of these incredible plants. You might not be surprised to know that there aren't many orchids in the desert galleries because the conditions aren't ideal for the blooms themselves and the tropical plants that they are. But in reality, there are orchids that grow even in the deserts of the world. Over here in the bed is a plant of Eulophia petersi, and it's an orchid that grows in the deserts of Central and Southern Africa, truly showing that this is a remarkable group of plants found in every environment imaginable. The orchid family is one of the largest flowering plant families with almost 25,000 incredibly naturally occurring species and now over 100,000 man-made hybrids. And this diversity is what makes this such a celebrated group of plants. And so you have plants that grow in deserts, swamps, but orchids in their greatest diversity are found in the tropics of the world near the equator. Here in the American Desert Gallery, we've included little pops of color, bright orange California poppies and blue nemophila, also known as five spot, in addition to the incredible sculptural forms of the cacti and succulents in this house. But one of the most remarkable transformations in this year's exhibition that Jeff had us install to create this seamless experience is just behind us. So come on along and I'll show you what we've done in this area. Because the path of our visitors is different than it normally is in this year's exhibition, Jeff's creative eye saw an opportunity to take advantage of new focal points and areas of interest that normally might be behind you. This beautiful curved wall was decorated with Phalaenopsis, succulent baskets, and Tillandsias to create an incredible textural effect here as you descend into the lower part of the exhibition on your way to the Upland Rainforest Galleries. Second only to about the 6,000 orchids that are on display in this year's exhibition, the most remarkable transformation is right behind me. Jeff wanted to not only create a continuous experience for our visitors as they move through the conservatory, but really wanted to transform a normally quiet pass-through space into an immersive color experience so people could really step into and be surrounded by the kaleidoscope of this year's exhibition. We're using some LED lights to transform this normally drab and quiet space into a moving immersive experience that has really been a favorite of the visitors and our staff alike. It really is an incredible point 
at which it leads the visitor from one section to the other without you ever leaving this wonderful and colorful experience in this year's 18th Annual Orchid Show. Here in the Upland Rainforest Gallery, we've displayed the plants in a very naturalistic setting, just like they would be found in the wild, growing as epiphytes attached to the branches of trees, where orchids, over the course of their evolution, have climbed the trees to reach the best available light, water, and moisture in rainforests around the world. Throughout this gallery, you'll see some spectacular examples of plants that orchids would be found growing naturally with, ferns, cycads, bromeliads, and one of our really special groups of plants are tropical blueberry relatives, which are just starting to bloom. You'll notice these dotted throughout the exhibition with colorful tubular blooms because the flowers are pollinated by hummingbirds. In the Upland Rainforest Gallery here, the walls are covered with mosses, selaginellas, beautiful anthuriums, and there are wonderful specimens of bromeliads dotting the landscape here in the conservatory. One of the most impressive is Alcantaria imperialis from Brazil. This rosette of leaves can hold up to 30 gallons of water in which a world within a world is created. And animals, amphibians, frogs, and even some species of plants live within this tank of water, providing a miniature reservoir to survive in this rainforest environment. this rainforest gallery, we've tucked little vignettes of tropical lady slippers and other small orchids from our extensive botanical collections. So as you move through, there's a wonderful element of discovery and surprise as you encounter these groups of plants throughout this section of the greenhouse. Rainforest Gallery, we've completely covered the columns with flowers and ferns, keeping that theming going, but also letting you know you're about to see something really special. In the next gallery, we've brought out a lot of really unique and special plants from our extensive botanical collections to highlight the beauty and diversity of the orchid family.
One of the strangest orchids here in the exhibition doesn't even look like a flower at all. The butterfly orchid, Cycopsis papilio, native to northern South America, is one of the most remarkable flowers here in this year's orchid show. These strange and bizarre looking flowers are credited with creating Victorian orchid mania in which people collected thousands of orchids and built enormous glass houses just like the one we're in today, all inspired by collecting and displaying incredible exotic blooms like this. Here in the climate controlled orchid display, we've got an incredible diversity of miniature orchids from our extensive orchid collection, of which is one of the largest of any institution in the world, over 6,000 individual specimens. I've brought out two of my favorites here, this Microtarangus from Madagascar with flowers a couple of millimeters in diameter. But the real star of the show is this tiny Oberonia, which has these fuzzy tails of flowers with several hundred blooms on an inflorescence, each smaller than a millimeter in diameter. Probably the most familiar orchid in this exhibition, whether you realize it or not, is this here. This rubbery vine is vanilla. What often is referred to as a bean is actually not a bean at all, but the seed pod of an orchid. So if you've ever wondered what those little black specks are in your vanilla ice cream, they're the seeds of this plant, because vanilla comes from an orchid. The New York Botanical Garden is one of several rescue centers for rare and threatened plants. If plants are being smuggled into the country and the shipment is seized, rather than the plants be destroyed, they're brought to a rescue center, such as the New York Botanical Garden, where plants like this Paphia pedalum delanadii from China and Vietnam will be rehabilitated and added to our permanent collections, which we can breed and propagate and share these remarkable plants with other botanical gardens around the world. One of the final dramatic moments that Jeff created is something he called Rise and Shine, in which he filled the vine gallery here with these incredible arches that grade from yellow through orange, peaches, and almost to reds, creating a sunset-like effect here in the gallery. The orchids surround the visitor above, to the side, left and right, and even in the reflection of the pool, create almost a tunnel-like effect as visitors move through giving them that immersive experience that Jeff really wanted to capture in this year's orchid exhibition, Jeff Latham's Kaleidoscope. Probably the one plant that tries to upstage the orchids every year is one of our most photographed and prized specimens, the jade vine. These incredible turquoise blue-green flowers are born on these long hanging clusters, over 36 inches long. These incredible blooms are native to the Philippines and are a relative of our wisteria. But it's the remarkable color, this turquoise blue-green, that makes this such a special plant. There's probably only about six flowers in the world that naturally have blooms this color. These strange blooms are actually pollinated by bats in its native habitat, which as they climb over feeding on the sweet nectar, pollinate this incredible vine from the Philippines. Thank you all for coming along on a tour of this year's Orchid Show. I hope you enjoyed the experience of Jeff Latham's Kaleidoscope.